Before the video starts, I wanted to tell you guys, you guys still have time to enter the Max Speeding Rods Coilovers giveaway. Giving away a set of coilovers to one of you guys, whether you have a 350Z or a G35, you can enter the giveaway. The giveaway winner will be announced May 1st, 2022, so you have some time to enter, so make sure you enter so you don't miss out on this giveaway. In today's video, we're going to be focusing on maintenance on the G35. To be completely transparent with you guys, I haven't been keeping up with the maintenance on this car all that much. If you guys remember, I went to the track last year in November and it's already April. That's how long it's been since I changed the oil and I also changed the oil before the track day. So it's still the same oil I ran on the track. So that's pretty bad. So I have to definitely take care of that one doing an oil change. So another thing I'm going to be doing is replacing the AN fittings on my oil cooler reason for that is there is a bit of oil in the bottom I don't know if you guys can see that so there's the oil in the bottom and I think it is leaking from that fitting right there that you can see these G plus AN fittings are just not good so I'm gonna be replacing them with a really good brand I tried skipping out on this side just to replace the ones on the oil filter but these are also gonna need to be replaced so I'm gonna be replacing these as well with some Russell fittings so that'll take care of that leak so here's everything we're gonna be doing on this video so like I said we have the oil change filter AN fittings we're also going to take care of the brake fluid and then on top of that we have the VQ plug special right here we got the license plate lights which are extremely bright I've seen them on cars it's insane how big of a difference it makes on top of that I have the bar right here that's gonna be going on the subframe so this is the tie brace that I'm gonna be installing as well I love the black on it and then on top of that I have these side markers that I'm gonna be installing if you guys are are familiar with VQ plug you guys would know that I ended up installing these really bright side markers and they pair up really nice with the spec D's so this is technically like version one these are just straight shot they have only the LED strips and these are the V2 so not only are they as bright as the ones that I have on the car already but they're also sequential so they'll look exactly the same as the spec D's when you're doing your blinkers so they're gonna have that sequential just like the spec D's which is a really nice touch and makes it even better to pair it up with spec D headlights. So like I said, this is more of a maintenance type of video, making sure everything is good on the G35. I don't want any leaks from that damn oil cooler and I also don't want to have old oil in the oil cooler and all over the car. So we're definitely gonna take care of that, those problems, and also put some goodies into the car, which is definitely something I've been wanting to do to the car for such a long time. So first we're gonna do the rear of the car. We're gonna have these license plate lights installed and then we'll have the bar installed as well. After that, we'll install the side markers and we'll have all that good to go. I'd rather install those just because this can get a little messy so I'd rather this be messy afterwards so that way I can install this. Alright guys, so first thing we're installing is the license plate lights. So this is the OEM housing and I just looked at it wrong and it ended up breaking. So I definitely need some new ones regardless, but thankfully the new ones come with the whole housing and not just the bulb. So literally the only thing you have to do is plug it in and then pop it back in and you're all good to go. So these are going to be a really nice addition into the G35. I've seen how bright these are and it's really, really cool. So real quick, I just wanted to explain. So what you're going to be taking off is going to be this whole assembly right here on both sides so the reason why you're taking it off is because the new one connects onto there so the new one has the exact same connector type so that's gonna be why you're removing that um, like I said it's not only replacing the light bulb but it's also replacing the whole housing so it's not needed to have this anymore Alright guys, so just like that, I ended up installing everything back on, even the license plate frame is on the car already. So like I said, really simple install, took five minutes if that, really, really simple to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the lights and see how they look. Oh shoot, dude, that's really bright, especially for it being lit up in the garage. I can't imagine how this will look like at night. Also keep in mind the car is way, way, way higher than it would be normally. So obviously the light on the floor also isn't as bright, but this would be insane at night, especially because I've been looking for something like that. As you guys know, I'm a sucker for lighting and when something's done really nice like this, it's definitely a really nice thing to have on your car. All right guys, so on to the next part that we're installing, we're gonna be installing this tie brace. Under stress, having some bracing to help control and minimize the flexing, whether it's on the subframe or all over under the car. It's very popular and very common for people to do this when they are building you know, track cars that are gonna be seeing a lot of track time. So that's perfect for myself 
myself since I want to take the G35 to more track events. Every little bit of chassis stiffening or bracing helps. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and install the brace onto the car. Alright guys, so we're under the car now and I went ahead and took off both of the bolts that are connected onto the subframe. The one thing I failed to do on this side that I ended up doing on this side is putting a little bit of paint marker on each side just to make sure that you know exactly where it's aligned because this does mess with your alignment. So by putting paint, it ensures that your alignment stays the same so that way you can install this and take it off no problem. Alright, so it's a really simple install. All you got to do is put the brace on and literally put the bolts back on. That's it. That's literally the whole install which is really simple and convenient. So I'm going to go ahead and install both bolts and then I'll be back once I'm done. Alright guys, so everything is good to go. So the bolts on each side are going to be torqued to 53 foot-pounds. With everything taken care of in the rear, now we can move on to the front. So again, we'll be taking care of the side markers, but since I am going to be taking the AN fittings apart on the oil cooler, might as well take off the bumper and then from there I'll be able to just swap everything and make sure all the wiring is good and also be able to do the oil change and do everything else. Well, I found where the leak is and it is from this fitting. The other fitting is fine, but I'm probably gonna replace it just in case. So this is gonna get a little messy, so that's why I wanted to wait till the end. Alright guys, so everything's put back together. I put both of the fittings on, just might as well do everything while it's out. Um, I made sure everything was tight on both sides, both ends of it. So this is all good to go, cleaned it off, all the oils off of it. So if there is a leak, I will be able to find it. So that took a while, so I'm probably not going to be flushing the brakes in this video just so I can get everything done for tonight. So the last two things I'll be doing is an oil change and then doing the side markers and then I'll call it quits on that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and go down and do an oil change on the car. I did go back with the JWT pop charger. I don't have the rest of it because I'm still playing around with the intake setup. And I also went back to the Nismo intake since that was a little bit longer. It helps out with just having uh, a lot more playroom. So that cold air intake that I had installed on the car was basically a whole mock-up. It's essentially giving me a whole blueprint on what I can use. So the intake is being worked on and I'm also going to be working on the intake manifold, the top upper plenum of it. So definitely stay tuned. That's a big video. I've been working on it for a while, so I want to make sure everything's good for you guys. So definitely stay tuned and I'll keep you guys updated. Oh, yeah, I needed a Noah change. <laughs> So another thing you guys will notice is that these lines and everything around is covered in oil because the damn o-ring gasket on the sandwich plate sucks so bad. It, I don't know what type of gasket they're using, but it just sucks at sealing. Um, the gasket just doesn't seal properly, so what I'm going to do is put some RTV around it. Obviously, I would love to be able to replace the gasket with something that can seal better. Being that this is a sandwich plate that isn't a common sandwich plate to have. I'm not entirely sure on what gasket would work, so I'm not going to try and bother, you know, buying a bunch of gaskets to see which one works. So what I'm going to do, RTV it, then put everything back on, and it should be good to go. I love this oil cooler, don't get me wrong, for the price you're getting, a really good thing. At the same time, I just wish that these things were a little bit more thought out, but that's what you get for, you know, paying 100 bucks for an oil cooler. So meanwhile, the RTV is drying. I wanted to go ahead and check my oil catch can, and this thing is, like, properly full. That is a lot of stuff in there now before you guys say anything i know this looks a little milkshakey but this is mostly condensation um it just happens that you know that forms in the catch can which is where i want it to be actually the first time i saw this was right before i was heading out to go to the track day so meanwhile the rtv is still drying i'm going to be showing you guys how to wire your side markers onto your car so the really cool thing about these side markers is that it comes with the instructions and shows you which ones you're going to be splicing into on the passenger side we're going to go ahead and go on the purple and white so you're gonna find your headlight connector which is going to have all your wires that go on to your either spec D's or just regular headlights so this is the passenger side so I'm gonna be looking for the purple wire which is right here so here is my purple wire so what I'm gonna do is T tap onto that and make sure that every single time I hit my blinker that my side marker and my spec D's are gonna be in sync so in order to do that we're gonna have our T tap right here and then we have our side marker right there so what I ended up doing is I ended up cutting out the end uh, to make this into its separate piece because I realized that if I do take off the bumper again this will be all 
together so I would have to somehow you know finagle everything out so this is gonna make it really simple to remove the bumper with the side marker and be able to not have to worry about the wire All right guys, so some time has passed by and it's really, really late. So I try to finish the car as much as I could. So basically I already put the oil, everything's good on the bumper side, installed everything. Both side markers are perfectly installed now, so they should be working. So what we're gonna do right now is go ahead and test them, make sure they work and see how they look. So here are the side markers working. So we got the passenger side working and then we also got the driver's side working as well. Like I said, it's very straightforward to install these and I made sure that I installed them correctly. I I think that looks really good and not only that I think the spec D headlights actually have a little bit of a dim sequential so I really like that you have kind of a backup as the side marker is a lot brighter than the spec D's. Alright guys, so two days have passed since I filmed the last clip. Um, I ended up driving the car around and I kind of didn't have time to film. But let me go ahead and show you guys the lights that we did install in this video. They look really sick at night, so let me show you guys. So first off, look at how bright these damn license plate lights are. You can literally have a whole little section right here highlighted just for you, which I think looks really sick at night. When the car's passing by, you see that you're like, holy shit, those are bright. And of course, the front of the car, I already had the side marker, so this isn't the different part. But let me show you guys when I put the hazards it looks so sick so here you can see the sequentials they look so sick at night having that all paired up together looks really good so so that's gonna be all for this video I hope you guys did enjoy it leave a like if you did subscribe if you're new around here I have plenty of g35 content on the channel so go ahead and check out there's a video for you I can guarantee it I will be doing a video in the future of channel updates and what I'm gonna be doing to the g35 because I'm kind of changing course a little bit so I'll keep you guys updated in the next video so with all that being said thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video peace